Coming up on Ag Week TV, it's been a tough cycle for dairy producers. We'll check out the financial health of the industry at this year's Central Plains Dairy Expo. We'll continue to look at the agricultural impact of flooding in the Midwest. Farmers are getting insight on how to grow and market high-yielding soybeans at this year's Soy 100. We'll tell you what NDSU is doing to solve the shortage of ag education teachers. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Rose Dunn. It's not the World Dairy Expo, but very close. Dairy farmers from around the region converged in Sioux Falls this week for the Central Plains Dairy Expo. Our own Michelle Rook was at the show and has more. Rose, the prolonged stretch of low milk prices has put the United States dairy industry in a crisis. According to USDA, 6.5% of operations, or 2,730 farms, went out of business from 2017 to 2018. In Minnesota, that number was even higher at over 10%. It's blamed on low profitability, with median farm income in 2018 at only $15,000. But you wouldn't know it, judging from the attendance and mood here at the Central Plains Dairy Expo. Farmers used the event to learn about new products from more than 300 exhibitors. They also took an education seminars on how to improve genetics and feeding techniques to be more efficient and squeeze out any profit they can. Joining us with the state of the industry as well as some of the top of mind issues among dairy producers is Marv Post. He is president of the South Dakota Dairy Producers Association. Talk about the industry in terms of the financial health right now. How are we looking? South Dakota has been doing uh, about on average as far as the number of dairy farms going out. Uh, we lose some uh, a lot of times because of the lifestyle and return on uh, the investment and the labor. Uh, so you lose some of those smaller dairy farms. But as a whole in, in uh, cow numbers, uh, we continue to grow and uh, we're, we're excited about the growth in the dairy industry in South Dakota. That is good news. As far as milk prices, is there a little light at the end of the tunnel yet? Oh yes, I think so. Um, uh, we've seen a, a dollar increase in, in just in the last month. Um, but we also look forward to the implementation of the dairy program in the farm bill. The program that's in there, tier one, is, is very favorable for the smaller operation. Uh, we should be able to sign up for that in the middle of June and uh, they have promised us that they will get the checks out fairly soon. What other issues are going to be top of mind a couple for producers the rest of the year? We're looking for uh, a resolution uh, and uh, signing of the USMCA, uh, which is trade. Uh, it's often forgot that uh, in the dairy industry we do export about one out of every seven tanker loads of milk in some form, and so we need that trade. Uh, that'll be great to get it back uh, going with Canada and, and Mexico. Of course, we'd like to see something done with the Dairy Pride Act, uh, which says that uh, milk is a secretion of a mammary gland and that it's identified if it's milk, it's milk and it came from an animal. We appreciate the update today. That's Marv Post, South Dakota Dairy Producers Association. Damages due to the Midwestern flooding have now topped an estimated $3 billion with the potential of more flooding on the horizon. President Trump has approved disaster declarations for counties in both Iowa and Nebraska. Iowa officials say agricultural losses are at least $214 million. Thousands of acres of cropland are underwater or saturated, and that has many farmers concerned about planting delays. Iowa State University crop specialists say it's too early to panic, but they are anticipating a late start and maybe some prevent plant in flooded fields. Some are very worried about it, but all we can do is wait and see what happens. But those flooded areas, of course, they're even worse, so it's going to be a longer window before we get to those. So the, the chances of being real timely this year, I think, are actually kind of slim. Late planting also makes it difficult to achieve trend line yields, plus there are losses due to soil erosion. There's also been damage to rural infrastructure and farmsteads. Missouri River flooding is expected to continue as above normal snowpack in the north melts and starts to move downstream. Forecasters are predicting flooding could last all the way through May. Damage totals continue to climb in Nebraska as well, and many sectors of agriculture have become casualties, including the ethanol industry. 
This week, Growth Energy asked the Department of Transportation to provide assistance to help expedite rail delivery of biofuels. Meanwhile, reports indicated ethanol capacity nationally was cut from 13 to 17 percent by flooding. However, ethanol officials in Nebraska say that number is inflated. No plants that I know of were affected with groundwater or even floodwaters coming onto their site. All sites, um, our plant included, are built with an elevation that um, prevents any kind of danger that way. So um, I don't know that we've had that much um, impact on our uh, supply of ethanol. Siouxland ethanol didn't have rail line damage, but the lines they used to ship south were hit. That has slowed but not stopped ethanol in co-product movement. I'll have more from the Dairy Expo later in this show, but after this, we'll take a look at a company that's helping farmers make better commodity marketing decisions. Do you have a vested interest in land? The upcoming Great Plains Land Expo is a must-attend event for landowners, developers, mineral interest owners, farm operators, and investors. Join us on Wednesday, June 26 in Fargo as we hear from a variety of industry leaders speaking on topics relating to land, energy, and minerals. You'll discover ways to capitalize on agriculture and energy opportunities and learn how to become a better steward of our natural resources. Early bird rates are available, so register today at GreatPlainsLandExpo.com. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckin's specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH factory trained service technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off-season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. The 2019 crop year looks fraught with stormy financial seas with low commodity prices and high fertilizer and input costs. But Lighthouse Commodities strives to be a beacon in the storm. In this week's Ag Week cover story, Michael Pates has more on how they're helping farmers. It's our job to keep these farms on course and keep them out of the rocks. A lighthouse symbolizes safety and Lighthouse Commodities aims to be a help for farmers navigating some challenging times and headwinds. The Bismarck Company is a roving grain buyer as regulated by the North Dakota Public Service Commission, but they operate with an unusual array of functions and strict financial controls. Seeing farmers struggle with marketing uh, really had a desire to help them with that cause specifically, to be on their side of the table, helping them make successful marketing decisions. And they're able to better focus on the other key aspects of their farm. One factor that makes Lighthouse different is its long and detailed list of safeguards and protections in place for farmers. With our 200 standard operating procedures, we put together a risk management policy. Um, this defines our risk controls, our internal controls, segregation of duties while conducting business. So what would be an example of a thing that might be important to somebody? In our business, if somebody's executing on a contract, the person executing on the contract can't be the same person accounting for those contracts on the back end. Marketing's always been a kind of a headache. <laughs> 
Amenia, North Dakota farmer Dan Zimmerman and his son Jay were Lighthouse's first clients and they're still there today. Dan likes that Lighthouse is independent, representing only the farm and not an elevator system. That always kind of made me nervous of uh, whose interest are they really in, mine or their elevator, you know. I would say it's helped our bottom line, too. In Bismarck, this is Mikkel Pates for Ag Week. You can read more about this story in the next Ag Week magazine or on agweek.com. The North Dakota Corn Growers Association has a new executive director. Lisa Hochhalter replaces Dale Irie, who died in January. The NDCGA is the farmer-led membership organization focusing on policy that impacts corn producers. Hochhalter will oversee operation of the association, working with the board to develop and implement programs that enhance the profitability of North Dakota farms. Still ahead, we head back to Michelle at the Central Plains Dairy Expo. And later, we'll see what NDSU is doing to bring more ag teachers to high school classrooms. Big Boy Toys. When planting season comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. This spring, keep your planters rolling with a user-friendly seed tender from North Star Ag. We have seed tenders for every sized operation from Meridian, Unverfirth, and JM. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery, and is a full-service Meridian hopper bin dealer. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used equipment inventory or give us a call. How can one tillage tool handle most field conditions, residue types, and tillage practices? It takes a Renegade, the summer's VRT Renegade. Switch from vertical to aggressive tillage and anywhere in between. Adjust blade angles, tillage depth, and more on the go, all from an iPad. Get the tillage results you want, like only the summer's VRT Renegade can. For more information or a demo, contact your summer's dealer. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech Electric System from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or add it to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Welcome back to Sioux Falls and the Central Plains Dairy Expo. With the continued slump in milk prices, what is the industry doing to help on the demand side? Joining us to visit about that is Ellen Merrill. He's chairman of the Midwest Dairy Association. And Ellen, what have you guys done to be proactive? It's a challenge in the dairy industry right now, but in the checkoff things, we are working with some of our national partners. It's Taco Bell, Domino's, uh, KFC. Um, all industry leaders but you know what we do with them is we put food scientists in with them and they have the opportunity to work side by side their innovation because we know innovation is what their consumers want. So domestic demand is important but what about expanding opportunities in the export front? We are continuing even with the tariffs in place to look at how we help processors export their products be it cheese or be it dry ingredients. Um, we, we export 90 percent of the dry ingredients in, in the world and uh, so it's a huge market for us and we know we'd like to make that more of a value-added product so what we're doing there US Debt helps us understand the policy of those other countries that we can work within those guidelines and then we uh, share that information back to the processors and see if they're interested in exporting to those countries. Thanks so much. 
Ellen Merrill with the Midwest Dairy Association. It's a beautiful day here at the Central Plains Dairy Expo. So is spring finally on the way? Here's your AgriWeather Outlook. Weather portion of Ag Week now. The uh, April weather pattern is shifting a little bit. It looks, for one thing, a rather milder start to April. Not a lot of heat, but some warmer days. Snow-covered areas will lag a little bit behind, of course, but uh, those snow-covered areas are shrinking in the northern plains. Rainfall will be happening, but it does not look as stormy, at least going into April, as the first and middle part of March was, which, of course, was very, very stormy. Spring is actually beginning to happen after what turned out to be a fairly long winter in southern Canada and the northern plains, upper Midwest, things are looking a little bit better. Weather pattern right now, we do have a southern branch of the jet and the northern branch. The northern branch is beginning to show signs of losing its impact on the overall region. It's not bringing down any more Arctic air, at least for the time being, and it will flip-flop around as we go through the week. There will be a bit of troughing, but I don't expect that to bring a lot of cold weather. There'll be a brief warm-up with some 80 getting as far north as maybe Nebraska midweek, 70s up into parts of Iowa, then that will gradually settle back southward once again, and cool weather will drop back into the northern plains, slowing the snow melt down in places that still have that, like eastern North Dakota and much of northern Minnesota, and that cool weather will linger into the second week of April, which is looking fairly cool. We are seeing warm spring temperatures across the south. Precipitation not as heavy. Uh, it looks like there will be a band of some rain that moves out into Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa, another area down around Texas this week. Looking ahead to the second week of the period, looking at uh, the April 7th through 13th, few showers into the northern plains, more substantial rain further south. The Rockies will get most of the snow. Some of this rain may be snow in the northern plains, but overall relatively benign precipitation pattern setting up for the first half of April. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. With the all-new GreenFit system from Rycard, Plug and Play is finally a reality when using John Deere AutoTrack guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 Series or all-new C-Series Road Gators from Butler Machinery. GreenFit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes the existing John Deere AutoTrack guidance system to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. GreenFit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about GreenFit at butlermachinery.com. Farmers take pride in growing safe, affordable, nutritious food. And since over 90% of U.S. farms are family or individually owned, keeping land and animals healthy makes sense for all of us. If you have questions about the food you eat, talk to the people who grow it. North Dakota farmers and ranchers are your best source for reliable facts on food and farming. Visit findourcommonground.com and become part of the food conversation today. Brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Checkoff. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Field Drainage Inc. has perfected the art of agricultural drainage by helping hundreds of farmers since 1978. We are a second generation family owned business for over 35 years. The Field Drainage Inc. team will work closely with you to conduct a thorough analysis of your needs and expectations. Provide an estimate that fits your budget, perform all work in a timely and professional manner, and provide continued service after installation. Field Drainage Inc., your trusted drain tile installation company for over 35 years. There has been a nationwide shortage of high school ag education teachers for years, and the same is true here in our region. But for the past few years, NDSU has been actively recruiting students to the ag education program. Continue to answer that question that's on there, what else do you need to know? 
Adam Marks came to NDSU five years ago with the job of increasing the number of students in the Ag Education and FFA program in order to meet the Ag Education teacher shortage. FFA plays a big role in a community's identity in, in rural America. Marx's recruiting efforts are paying off. And I want you to use that same set of decision making. The numbers have been up each of the past five years. There are 10 to 15 ag ed jobs open each year in North Dakota, and this year NDSU will graduate that many ag education teachers. And schools are not just replacing ag teachers, many are adding ag education to the curriculum. That's awesome because we're seeing that schools and communities are seeing, understanding the value of a comprehensive agricultural education to, to their communities. At the same time, it exacerbates the, the shortage that, that we have in the state. Kelsey Henderson is from Rochester, Minnesota. She's not from a farm and her urban high school didn't have ag education, but she found her way to the program once she got to college. I loved talking about agriculture, teaching other people about agriculture, and so I just fell in love with the idea of being an ag teacher. Now she hopes to bring ag ed to her former high school because it isn't just for farmers. Developing informed consumers who know what the terms cage-free, organic, um, GMOs, they know what that means and they're able to kind of not fall for marketing schemes as easily as people who don't know what those terms are. Sarah Hadlewick grew up on a farm near Jamestown, North Dakota. She hopes to find an ag education job close to home so she can keep raising cattle and farming with her parents. I want to impact our uh, future generations and really explain to them how agriculture works and show them there's many opportunities outside of farming and ranching that kids that aren't from the farming background, that they can still get involved in agriculture and impact um, their future generations. Ag Ed Day at NDSU, a recruitment event for high school students, will be held on April 12th in Fargo. Recently at the Bayer Agvacy Forum in Orlando, Dr. Janine Abrams of Purdue University spoke on increasing diversity in agriculture. Katie Pinky joins us now with more. Thanks, Rose. Janine Abrams grew up in Philadelphia and took an interest in her aunt's gardening, which led her to focus on agriculture sciences in school. Today, in addition to being a plant research scientist, she's spreading the message of the benefits of problem solving in agriculture by increasing diversity. We recognize as plant scientists that we cannot exist and cannot move our uh, genetic lines forward without diversity. But somehow as people, we've been a slow, in a slow process to recognize the value and importance of that. What advice do you have for the agriculture industry of bringing diversity to the table? We really have an opportunity to do so much and accomplish so many great things if we would just open ourselves up and allow everyone's perspectives and backgrounds to be treasured in the process of solving problems in agriculture. Abrams is the president of Manners, or Minorities in Agriculture, Natural Resources, and Related Sciences. The National Manners Conference is April 3rd through the 6th in Kansas. Thanks a lot for sharing that, Katie. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll have some tips on maximizing soybean yields and profits. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today.
I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. In a year of low prices and tight margins in soybeans, farmers need every bushel to make a profit. That was the focus of this year's Soy 100. Michelle Rook talked to the experts to get their recommendations for pushing past the 100 bushel mark. The goal is to help farmers increase profit potential with higher soybean production. We're looking at for soil fertility and, and other ways that we can increase yield as long as, as well as the disease and, and pest problems that we can fight. SDSU's Dr. Gray Carlson says the yield curve is already trending higher. Across the Midwest, we're, we're, we're increasing our uh, yield of soybeans by half bushel per acre every year. However, he says there's no silver bullet to achieving high soybean yields. It's top level management in everything that we do. It's, it, it's uh, weed controlled, it's insect controlled, it's disease controlled, it's uh, uh, fertility management. In another year of tight margins for beans, agronomists shared low cost management strategies including narrow row spacing, selecting the right variety and proper placement. So variety wise in our, in our plots we've seen differences between 25 to 30 bushels just in variety selection. Ted Seifert also offered soybean marketing advice with a $1.20 swing higher or lower depending on a China trade deal. Use cash sales or futures to manage your risk and manage the downside risk that we have. And if you want to replace that with, with opportunity, you can go out and own calls. Farmers also learned about a new pest, gall midge. The larvae were first detected in 2015. The adult has not been found in the state, but there has been yield impact of 10 to 100 percent. Miller Coors has filed a lawsuit against Anheuser-Busch over its series of commercials on their use of corn syrup in the brewing process. Bud Light doesn't use corn syrup, Miller Coors does. The lawsuit alleges the ads that began during the Super Bowl and outraged corn farmers are false and misleading. Miller Coors says contrary to those ads, there is no corn syrup in the final product and they don't use high fructose corn syrup. We use corn syrup as a fermentation uh, aid to get the yeast active to help brew the, brew the grape beers. It actually doesn't wind up in the, in the finished product uh, at all. But there's actually not high fructose corn syrup, but that was the intention of, of those ads. Miller Coors is asking a federal court to halt the ads and force Anheuser-Busch to launch a new campaign to correct the false impressions. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.